so what's cool is you add those articulations together and it sounds like one entire performance. Percussion Factory. This is a freaking cool instrument. Hi, I'm Rayburn Johnson for Sample Library Review, and today I'm checking out Percussion Factory by UVI. True to its name, Percussion Factory comes stocked with an entire assembly line of percussion instruments and rhythms. Easily customizable with independent sequencers and controls for up to eight instruments, Percussion Factory is an instant inspiration machine. Percussion Factory runs in both the free UVI Workstation 3.1.11 or above and Falcon 2.8.5 or above. A free iLock account is required, but no dongle is necessary. The instrument includes 556 presets across 1,014 layers and 8,560 samples and requires 700 megabytes of disk space. Percussion Factory is available from UVI for $149.99, but at time of review was available for the introductory price of $99 through March 8, 2023. This is compatible with either the free UVI workstation, or as I'm using it today, it's compatible as well with the powerful and fantastic Falcon Synth by UVI. Um, the functionality is exactly the same in either one. Obviously within Falcon, you have more flexibility simply because you can add all of the crazy scripts and additional sequencers and all of the cool things that Falcon has. But what I'm gonna show you today, I'm not gonna show you any functionality that won't work in either Falcon or the free UVI workstation. Percussion Factory is just such a cool instrument. I've had a lot of fun just playing with this for a little bit before I've done the, before I've started the review here. And there's just so much to like. You can see on the main interface, there's eight different instruments. Um, you're gonna see a ton of presets over eight different categories. We're gonna go into those. And again, we'll just barely scratch the surface because I think there's 556 different presets here. So obviously we can't go through even a fraction of everything that's here. But what I really want to point out is just how flexible this instrument is. And as we dive in, we'll start with some of the presets and then we'll get into the interface a little bit to help you see exactly what you can expect under the hood of Percussion Factory. So to begin with, right now I'm in the World Tour category under Africa. You can see it's divided up by the different sections of the world. And we're going to start with this very first one and see what we've got. Really, really cool. And I'm going to show you what all these keys do here in just a moment. Let's do a couple of other presets just to give you an idea. Really, really cool. One of the things that's so cool about Percussion Factory 2 is you can obviously do the straight ahead, you know, um, four bar rhythms with, you know, 16th notes or eighth notes or whatever, but you can also do all sorts of polyrhythms with this, which is just so fun. And you're going to see it's really, really cool under the hood. So just to kind of give you what's going on here, you've got your four different instruments. Each of these are selectable. So as you click into them, you can go into the category. So if you want a hand drum, you can see all of the different kinds of hand drums. And then beside that is all of the different articulations. You can see, I mean, there are so many instruments under each of these categories. And under each instrument, you've got a plethora of different articulations. I mean, it's just really, really amazing how much stuff they've stuck in here. But where the fun really happens is in the edit menu, because this is where you can see you have independent, completely customizable sequencers for all eight layers, which just becomes crazy how much cool stuff you can do in here. So first, before we dive into the sequencer and kind of show you how that works, these individual keys, the first key on C4, <laughs> 
that is what plays the entire loop. So it's playing all eight instruments, all eight sequencers. Then if you go down to each of these individual blue keys from C2 to C3, you've got just the individual instrument and the loop that it's currently on. So just to show you, then if I want to add the next one, let's add the tambourine. So that's how that works. And then down here, got each individual instrument where you can just play. So you could just do your own. I mean, it, just so much flexibility. This is where it gets crazy fun though, is in the editor. So here you can see, you can kind of go crazy. Obviously you can once again, select the instrument. You also have a randomized function, which creates all sorts of happy accidents and has it just gives you so much fun to be able to sit here and randomize these different instruments and try different sequences. You can also randomize the sequence by hitting this little wand here. If I randomize the sequence, it completely changes how many, um, how many, notes are in the grid and additionally how many notes we're actually going to play as part of that sequence. Obviously you've got right here, your timings, you can do eighth notes, you know, you can do triplets, you can do everything. I mean, it's just tons and tons of options here. Um, here you can see that you're putting how the percentage of how many bars are going to be used. So for instance, right here, I'm only, I'm only using six bars for this pattern. If I go all the way up to 16, and then I do this, it's going to randomize or not randomize, excuse me. It's actually going to control how many of these are active. So right now I'm turning off everything but one. This is controlling every one of them. But obviously when I draw in the pattern is where it actually plays the instrument. Now that's all hunky dory and fun and cool where it's really fun is in the next level. So when you hit this little, this little uh, icon here, it actually takes you into the sequence itself. Now it has presets for the sequence. So you've got some presets here. You can also create your own sequences and then save them and load them later. But where it gets really fun is not only can you, you know, draw these in, but then you actually have divisions for each individual note on the grid. So let's say we want to divide this into twos, maybe threes, maybe fours, all the way up to four. You can divide an individual 16th note into four different notes. So what is that like a 64th on just the one 16th pattern? I mean, <laughs> super cool. So let's solo this one out and just play around with it to give you an idea. So let's take this and let's actually make it go maybe three and let's try this. And it just has that, I mean, that role is so natural. There is absolutely, I've not heard a single machine gun effect in this. It sounds so perfectly natural. I'm actually really amazed at how well they've done this. I mean, so cool. You've got pitch, so you can actually change the pitch. So let's say that maybe I want to change the pitch of this step here. I want to go down. Oops. Okay. So it's got a little bit machine gunny there when you start messing a little bit too much with the pitch, but I mean, this just creates tons of possibilities. You've got a gate. So obviously you can cut out some of the resonance at the end of each note using that. Um, you've got a skip. So just tons of stuff. If I hit suggest, it's just going to change the pattern up so I can just randomize the pattern. And you can see it doesn't just randomize what it's drawing on the grid. It randomizes the divisions and it randomizes the number of notes that it's going to put in the grid. I mean, how cool is that? That was just a random pattern. Now let's add that in with the rest and see what we have.
I love this. Oh my goodness. This is so fun. And when you, you know, when you start playing around with this, I can go through and let's say I want to randomize all the instruments. Now, maybe you'll get a happy accident. Maybe you'll get a happy, uh, a sad disaster. I don't know. But, you know, this is where it gets really fun to me is getting in here, randomizing, letting the interface do the work for you and tweaking that a little bit to come up with your own custom patterns that you can add into your tracks that don't sound like anyone else. So let's see what we've got here. Actually, you know what? Just for fun, let's actually go back. Um, let's go back here. Oops. Let me go here and then over here. And I'm going to actually, now that we've randomized each instrument, I'm going to randomize the sequence for each instrument. And I have no idea what this is going to sound like, but let's give it a whirl. I mean, how easy was that? And I have something completely original. Let's do it again. So just going through here, hitting all the randomize. I do wish there was one big randomize button and maybe I'm just missing it. If you randomize this, it actually just pulls up a random preset for you. Um, that's the only thing I can see in this entire instrument that I don't like so far is I wish you had one big randomize button for that, but still super easy to go through and do this. So just hitting all these and let's see what we've got now. And I don't know if you've noticed, but no one of those patterns was exactly the same because you can see here in one, I've got four in another, I've got 16, another, I've got 12. So now I've got a polyrhythm going on. I've got 16 here, 16 here, 14. I've got two and I've got 16. So here you can see with this uh, 14 and this 12, you're really creating some cool polyrhythms. So what that's going to do is it's going to take a long time for that to loop. And so you're essentially going to end up with possibly eight, 12, 16 measures of something that's got a little bit of variance in it with every go around and doesn't repeat for 16 bars. I mean, how cool is that? And obviously, you know, you've got effects and that's, you've got global effects, sins, master effects, but then for each individual one, you also have effects. So if I go in here, I can go right now. I'm on the sequence. I can go to the sound and I can completely tweak this sound. I can add filters to it. Um, you know, I've got ADSR controls and I have an effects tab here where I can add crusher, flanger, frequency shifter, EQ, and then I can control how much of the reverb and delay sends I want to include in that particular instrument. So again, tons of flexibility, tons of capability and Tons and tons and tons of fun. Okay, so that's the interface. That gives you an idea of what you're doing. Again, if you want to change the instruments, if you want to be more intentional about it instead of randomizing that, you can either do it here in the edit menu simply by clicking on the actual instrument listed. Or when you're on the main page, you can just click the instrument and pull it up from there. So with all that said, and that's a lot, let's go ahead and continue our world tour and just do some more presets across each of these categories and give you an idea of what you can expect to hear here. Let's go ahead and jump into the Caribbean. One thing I want to point out is if you watch the pattern unfold on each of the individual instruments, you can see here when you've got the dot filled in, that's indicating exactly where it's going to play when it's going around the grid. But you can actually see the polyrhythms happening in real time. I just love that. See that going around? There's a note. So 
so, so, so cool. All right, let's go over to East Asia and see what we've got. Sounds so, so, so good. Let's try India. I mean, is that instantly inspirational or what? I'm sitting over here. You can't see me on video, but I am. My, my head is kind of bobbing and my neck's going crazy. I mean, these are awesome. These are so cool. Actually, you know what? I want to go back to that one right before that. Okay, I got to figure out what instrument that is. Is that an Indian jaw harp? It is. I mean, just that is so cool. And again, you know, because you can tune this, you can change the pitch. So you can see here it's dun, 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 dun. So we're going down two, uh, we're going down a whole step essentially, and then going right back. So you can create your own melodic sequences with that kind of thing. So, so, so cool. Okay, let's see. Let's go to the Middle East. go to North America. I love how they have a lot of Native American rhythms here. That's really, really cool. Like you can see the Lakota, the Indian run. That's that's really cool. Let's try this washboardist. I love these animations. So cool. Okay, and South America? Now, obviously, one thing I should point out is you can see on the individual preset, it's actually telling you what the BPM is for that particular preset, like what it was intended for. Now, obviously, it's going to sync to your DAW, um, but that that's to give you a good indicator of kind of where this fits best. So 
so cool. All right, let's get a realistic and see some of these. One thing I want to point out too is, are you noticing how fast this is loading? Um, one thing that I've struggled with in the past with some UVI instruments, UVI makes incredible instruments, but sometimes the load time on the presets um, is a little bit long compared to other manufacturers. But this library, I don't know what they've done. They've optimized this beyond just about any other uh, any other sample library company that I've found. This is loading incredibly fast. Now, one thing I will say as well as we're going through these is there is no MIDI drag and drop, which at first I was a little bit disappointed. But as you read the instruction manual, you really understand why they had to do that. Um, essentially, it has to do with, you know, adding realism. You have to be, they have to, there's some sort of scripting under the hood that's actually anticipating some of these notes and making them more realistic, which doesn't necessarily translate to MIDI. However, with that said, one of the things I love about Falcon are the incredible scripts. And one of the scripts that, that exist in Falcon as just a default is a MIDI recorder that you can put after any UVI instrument. So I've played around a little bit and put a MIDI recorder after Percussion Factory and recorded some of the things, some of the sequences that are coming out of it. And then I've taken that and put it onto something like trailer drums Oh, goodness, you can do some super duper cool stuff. So let your imagination run wild. This library is obviously intended to give you tons of percussion, but because of something like Falcon and how flexible it is, if you're using this within Falcon and not just the UVI workstation, you can use that MIDI record, drag and drop your MIDI onto another one of your trailer percussion libraries and you can come across some real happy accidents doing that. So just a just a fun little tip there for you. Okay, let's go to the modern section and see what we have. I mean, come on, how cool is that? What is that? Oh my goodness, listen to that. You can see where they've done the pitch here. 
make your own. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I mean, come on, that is just awesome. Wow. Dang, I mean, this library is just awesome. It's so cool. How can this not, how can you not have fun doing this? Again, I just, I, we're barely scratching the surface here, but just wanting to give you a bunch of presets, as many as we can fit in a few minutes. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's like a really cool drone in the background on that one. So cool. Actually, let's go to Desert Walk. That sounds fun. Because of how complex, I mean, this is so cool. It sounds like all these crazy polyrhythms going on, but these are all 16th notes. I don't know. That is, wow, super duper cool. I mean, man, this is awesome. So that's the shaken category. So more like shakers and things like that. And you can see it's got the little the little icon that corresponds to the instrument that you're loading as well. Here's a number of hand drums. If you're wearing headphones, you can hear the stereo filled on that one going kind of crazy, which is really cool. You can see over here that you actually have your panning options. So like this one's on the left, this one's on the right, this one's more to the right, this one's more to the left. So those are kind of bouncing around the stereo field, which just adds a really cool effect. Let's go to the metal and wood section.
That's so cool. Let's go to the heavy section. And let's go to instruments. And you can see here you have just the individual instruments, the hand drum, shaken, metal, wood, and friction. Let's go to friction. You can see it's just gonna do an individual instrument. So sometimes it's doing more than one sequence, but with an individual instrument. So you've got a rattle here. And same thing here, you've got two of the same instruments going on. And here you have, uh, what, seven instances of the same instrument and then one individual. Oh my. Can you hear that wah? <laughs> And again, you've got individual instruments all through here. So you could pick up, you know, the individual, like a djembe, a wood djembe. You got six instances playing here, but with different articulations. So what's cool is you add those articulations together and it sounds like one entire performance from an individual or a couple of, ind a couple of people. I mean, percussion factory. This is a freaking cool instrument. I really love this thing and I can see this being so useful for so many people. This is not one of those libraries that, you know, on the surface you think to myself, oh my, you think to yourself, oh my gosh, I gotta go get, you know, something that lets me do customizable percussion. Most people are thinking about, you know, the big bread and butter string libraries or the big bread and butter percussion libraries. But something like this has a thousand different uses, uses in a thousand different contexts. And I hope you've been able to see from the review, the flexibility is just crazy how much you can do with this, with this end, these eight independent, uh, eight independent sequencers with uh, pitch controls that allow you to even create melodies. I mean, come on, this is just a cool, cool instrument. Thanks for checking out Percussion Factory with me today. So what do you think? Do you find this instrument to be inspiring? Can you see implementing Percussion Factory into your own workflow? Comment below and let us know what you think. Please like the video and share it with your friends and also subscribe to our channel. Be sure to check out samplelibraryreview.com for more news and reviews to stay in the know about weekly sales via our weekly deal compressor.